Welcome to another Insider Spotlight. I'm Jared Johnson. I'm joined by the mighty Joe Yeager. Well, mighty Joe, Texas Tech moved to 3-0 last week with that 27-24 road victory against Houston, but it doesn't get any easier. Uh, big marquee game right here at the Jones. Texas Tech takes on you know, a ranked opponent in Oklahoma State, 7 o'clock on Saturday, blackout, night game. What are your thoughts? <laughs> We're starting to black out early. Right, you know, <laughs> oh, this is charcoal gray technically, but I think it's close okay. enough. Uh, but uh, yeah, man, uh, monster game, monster game. Um, I think it's the biggest one of Kingsbury's career so far. Wow. Yeah, I think if Tech wins this, they're probably in the top 25. Uh, and I think that vaults them. It gets Tech, Tech sort of back where it was uh, during the Mike Leach era. I mean, I, th I think it really has that potential. Wow. When you, you look at what they've done so far, beat a couple of pretty decent football teams in Arizona yeah. State and Houston, Houston on the road. Uh, in the game, they were an underdog by about a touchdown in. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think this one is the one that uh, if Tech pulls it off, uh, it gets them absolutely on the right track again. Wow, well, what a great intro to our next spotlight. What we do here in the spotlight for the uninitiated is we, we each spotlight one particular aspect of the upcoming game that we feel like y'all should keep an eye on. So Mighty Joe, what's your spotlight for this Texas Tech-Oklahoma uh, State matchup? Yeah, uh, I'm looking at uh, the Tech O-line versus Oklahoma State's D-line. Yeah. Uh, and I think probably before the season, if you'd looked at that, you would have said maybe that's a little bit of a mismatch in favor of Oklahoma State. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think things have flipped around a little bit here. Uh, I uh, watched the Oklahoma State TCU game, and the thing that actually jumped out the, to most, uh, the most to me in that game uh, was the way TCU's offensive line just manhandled that defensive line, just knocked them off the ball. Uh, and, you know, that, that, that shocked me a little bit. Uh, and I think that if TCU uh, was able to do that, I believe that Texas Tech's offensive line, that is, which is improving, it's still got a ways to go. It's not, it's not a, a world beat or anything. But, I, you know, I think there's the, the possibility uh, that, that Tech could have uh, some real balance in this game. I think they have the ability to run the ball by controlling the offensive line, and the passing game is going to do some damage. There's no question about that. Uh, but it all starts with that offensive line, and I think they're, they're capable of doing the job there and uh, and uh, really sort of facilitating a very good offensive performance from Texas Tech. Now, I was really I don't know, shocked is an exaggeration, but I was really surprised that Tech only gave up two sacks. And, but, and was also able to run for 200 yards yeah, yeah. against that Houston defensive front. It's a veteran accomplished defensive front there at Houston, a place they haven't lost since I believe 2014 until. Yeah. But now, now, come on now. Now two of those runs where one was 84 and one was 70. Yeah, you know, that doesn't really count, right? Right, yeah. you know, you know, Joe's saying that in jest because him and I, we already talked about this in the day after podcast, but uh, now we're not one of those people that discount the runs just because they happen to be long. They happen to be really successful. No, and you you look at them. Tech was doing some things. They were pulling guys on one of them, and then the other one was uh, you know Stockton just doing his thing. So uh, no, we're not. Uh, we don't discount those long runs. They they earn that. Uh, for me, for what I'm spotlighting, Mighty Joe is actually the other side of the ball, but also staying in the trenches. It's where these games are usually won and lost here. It's cliched for a reason. Uh, and Oklahoma State also had problems with TCU's defensive line, sure. which may not have been as much of a surprise, yeah. considering A, they lost two of their starters on the, uh, their right guard for the season, and then Crabtree, their right tackle, uh, for at least that game. Uh, you know, he has a, like a tur uh, really nasty turf toe kind of deal where things I've read where it's like really big and purple <laughs> and black and uh, yeah. For some reason, <laughs> for some reason, uh, they're not able to actually inject it with like I anything because it could do further damage. So uh, he's still doubtful. I'm expecting him to play, but I'm not. I mean, I'm definitely not 100. percent I don't have any sources per se up at uh, up in Stillwater. So uh, we'll have to see what happens there because there's a big drop drop off from Crabtree, a senior, uh, one of the best offensive linemen, honestly, in the Big 12 here to last year or so to their next couple guys. On the other hand, Texas Tech's defensive line, really, you could argue, has been its most consistent unit, even more than the wide receivers after last week. They have dominated all three games that they've been in so far, Whether, you know, starting with Eastern Washington, where I believe they gave up negative two yards on the ground uh, in the second half. And then uh, against Arizona State, which Let's face it, this looks like a really good offensive team now, Arizona State. I mean, they just went in and beat Oregon on the road. They've put up points against, you know, really Texas Tech and Oregon now back-to-back. -back. Uh, 
and then but even they didn't have a good uh like rushing output right. and then houston didn't until they put in postma so and that was really you could argue that was in garbage time so to me, I feel like this defensive line, which has not only been very good as far as the starters, the Mike Thomas, the Zach Barnes, the strong side defensive end, uh, Broderick Washington in there with Big Mike, and then also uh, Lonzel Gilmore. But the guys who have come off the bench have not only just gone in and been okay, serviceable, but they're making plays too. Eli Howard was uh, just had two tackles for loss against Houston. Uh, Nick McCann has been great. I mean, there's no drop off really with him, which is saying a lot because Mike and Broderick have been ripping it up. Uh, Tony Jones, all he does is make plays. Uh, so really, he could go on, uh, but that matchup to me is going to be a key. If they can attack and specifically that right side of the of Oklahoma State's offensive line that's injured and put pressure on Rudolph and force him to make throws you know, off timing, then Tech can keep on with that uh, turnover margin that's been so nice for them. You know, they're number two uh, in the country as far as turnover margin, and plus seven and almost uh, two and a third per game. I mean, that's going to be huge. Can they put pressure on Rudolph, maybe overload, dial up some of those twists and stunts that, that Gibbs has dialed up here in the first three games and get pressure on Rudolph? Yeah, I mean, I could not have, agree more. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, the, the pressure is, you know, it, I think the modus operandi for, for Gibbs so far this season uh, has, has been play a little bit soft in the secondary, uh, kind of load up the box a little bit on the run, uh, and then yeah. pick your spots to bring pressure. Uh, and, you know, I think that's absolutely going to continue against Oklahoma State. Uh, it, you, you can't let Rudolph sit back there with those receivers. You've got to occasionally uh, upset him. And uh, you really need to have a few turnovers in this game. I mean, yeah. I think uh, two is acceptable, but you may need three to win this game. Yeah. Uh, and, and putting pressure on Rudolph is the best way to do that. I mean, interceptions, but also maybe you cause the guy to fumble. Yeah. You know, uh, so I just couldn't agree more on that one. You know, Broderick Washington uh, spoke with the media in the, in the Tuesday press conference this week, and I asked him flat out, is stopping the run the key to your defense? And, you know, a lot of people say, well, that's the that's the key to everybody's defense. But I think it even has more extra emphasis with Texas Tech, just given the recent history of teams feeling comfortable coming in here and just running all over Tech. That's not happening this season. They're, I believe they rank 40th in the country in uh, rushing yards per game allowed. Uh, they haven't allowed either any of their first three opponents to rush for over four yards per carry. If they keep that going, now, don't get me wrong, Oklahoma State is a great passing game. But if they can get them into longer third, like third downs, not the third and mediums, but the third and, and longer downs, I think the stats prove out that Oklahoma State hasn't converted it at as high a rate. So and it's it's significant. And they can put that pin their ears back and get that pressure on Rudolph and hopefully get those turnovers we're talking about. But uh, either way, we're really excited to see how these matchups turn out. Those are two areas we've spotlighted. Great stuff from you, Joe, as always. Thank you all for watching, and until next time.